Here's an overview I want you to pay attention to. So basically, when we talk about the Form 2553, we are speaking about election by a small business corporation. And the information on the form is pretty straightforward. So part one here, you have election information. So here we are speaking about the, the name of the company, uh, the uh, the address, the, the zip, everything that's uh, kind of related to the company. You have to put the EIN also. So we're speaking about the the uh, employer identification number and the date incorporated. So make sure that the date that you are actually are putting here fits with uh, the date that you you have on your official uh, articles of uh, articles of incorporation. And then you want you have to put online E here. You have to put the the uh, the date you want the election to be effective. This is kind of kind of a straightforward. And uh, line F, you have to uh, specify whether you you have uh, you want to go with the calendar year, or you want you want to have uh, some kind of uh, alternative. So you can have fiscal year, fiscal year, and in some cases there are some industries where they don't have 52 weeks, they have 53 weeks. So you have to really justify that. And uh, line H here, you have to put the name uh, and title of the person uh, with whom the IRS can talk about uh, this application. Pretty straightforward. Make sure that you have somebody who is uh, accessible because the IRS is known to call very, very often about uh, Forms uh, 2553. So, so that's the first uh, the first uh, screenshot. Second screenshot here, you actually have to, uh, th there is a series of uh, certifications that are pretty straightforward here. Again, it's all about you telling the IRS that you, uh, you're following this, uh, this Form 2553 within reasonable time. If you're late, you have to explain the delay and please make sure that you are straightforward no uh, no lies here and don't forget to sign the form okay at, at the bottom and i want to show you before so i want to show you something else before moving to move into uh the next screenshot so here you have you can see on the screen here you have uh where you should file the form if you want to file the form manually where should you should file the form depending on your state so you have you can fax it or you can file it so you have uh, the first one from Connecticut all the way to Wisconsin. That's the that's the first one, and the second one from Alabama all the way to Wyoming. So this is pretty straightforward. The IRS is pretty straightforward here when it comes to your location and the address you should follow. Uh, you should follow the form too. Boss, well, welcome back to the show. It's really a pleasure to have you here. Make yourself comfortable. You are going to enjoy today's conversation. Moving on here, I'm showing you on the screen here. So I want to show you part one here. So part one here, you have, uh, you put the name, you put the uh, EIN, and the part one is pretty straightforward. In other words, you have to put uh, the shareholder information. So first name, last name, the signature of uh, the shareholder, the stock owned or percentage of, or percentage of ownership. The IRS just want to have a clear idea of what's really happening with your organization. So that's the first screenshot. Second screenshot here, this is part two. So here you have to uh, specify what really applies to your situation. So we put uh, O2, we are speaking about an existing corporation retaining the tax year entered in uh, item F part one. And for a P, we have a P1. So uh, we have a natural business year, nothing complicated here. In some cases, you might have uh, an ownership tax year, but this depends on uh, the specifics of your niche or your company. And uh, for uh, Q, Q does not does not apply uh, like Q1. The first the first item doesn't apply to us, so we will put uh, at the bottom we put yes. And uh, two does not apply. Three with this apply to us, and four. Here I'm currently on R, so this is the third screenshot. So uh, R we have R2. The fourth screenshot here, you have uh, you have to put. I'm just showing you some of those things, so you have a clear idea what what uh, they look like. They may not be applicable to our hypothetical uh, situation here, but I just want to show you what the form looks like. So part three, we are speaking about uh, QSST qualified subchapter S trust. This is uh, obviously not applicable to our situation. Part four, you have here late corporate classification election representation so here pretty straightforward you have to tell the IRS why you are having a late corporate class classification election but yeah you have to uh, you have to uh, certify a few things so bottom line here is that when we talk about uh, 
requesting relief for a late escort status election. We are speaking about simply making the election effective for the next year, requesting relief stating that there was reasonable cause and request relief using an IRS revenue procedure. So in anything you actually choose here, make sure that you are able to back it up. It's all about substantiating your uh, your affirmations here, okay? And when we talk about the the uh, the ability to get the late S Corp status election, there are some benefits actually. By the way, boss, I want to quickly remind you of today's topic. We are having a conversation about Form 2553. Let me talk to you about, about the approach you need to really follow here. So when we talk about Form 2553, we are speaking about a form that's pretty straightforward, but the IRS has a, a series of information that it wants to collect from you, okay? So IRS Form 2553 is a form that helps you elect to be taxed as an S corporation instead of a default C corporation. So if you are basically a C corporation, you can actually elect to be taxed as, as, as an S corporation. And so when we talk about Form 2553 in that regard, it's one of those things where the form is applicable to uh, a corporation or other entity eligible to be treated as a corporation that wants to actually, that want to be uh, filing Form uh, 1120S. Because once you, once the IRS approves your election, you don't have to uh, file the regular Form 1120 that C corporations have to file. You have to file now Form 1120S. Remember that when we talk about a C corporation, we are speaking automatically about the double taxation concept here. So when you switch from a C corporation to S corporation, you are actually asking the IRS in essence to grant you actually uh, pass through taxation. In other words, you're, you do not want to pay taxes at the company level. You want to pay taxes on your at the individual level. So you are basically are like uh, when you file form 1120S, Form 1120S is an information return. You are just informing the IRS of, what's, of, what, uh, of what happened, but you are paying your taxes when you file your, your own Form 1040, Schedule C. This is where you actually specify everything so the IRS knows, okay, we are in good, we are in good terms now, okay? So Form 2053 allows your C corporation to elect S corporation status. So let's talk about uh, filing form 2553 for real. I want to go a little bit in depth here. I showed you when we started to this conversation, I showed you what it, what it looks like, but I want to go a little deeper here. So when we talk about this form 2553, we have a series of steps that can help you actually file the form and get approved. Don't forget to provide uh, your election information. We're speaking about your name and address, right? The state where the business was incorporated, your EIN, and the names and contact information of a key officials in the company, okay? And the tax year, you would like your business to be designated as an S corporation. And don't forget to select the fiscal tax year. I showed you before, right? You are able to uh, choose a calendar year or you can choose a specific tax year depending on your situation. And uh, so this is pretty straight, straightforward. And uh, if, you're, uh, if you are a QSST, a qualified subchapter S trust, you are able to, I mean, if you are a corporation that wants to elect QSST, then you are able to get things done that way. But this is only for, for the QST. So step three. And uh, step four, it's uh, a series of uh, late corporate classification election representations that I showed you before in terms of uh, your uh, specific situation. Now, one thing I want to say here is that when you actually uh, ask the IRS to grant you actually a form uh, to, to actually approve your form 2523 in other words to grant you as corporation election please make sure that you are able to substantiate all uh, the all the information you claim on your on your tax form for example when we talk about the your, the date your corporation was uh, your corporation was incorporated if you say oh well my business was incorporated march 15th 2024 that date must correspond to what's avail what uh, what's really uh, seen in your articles of, of uh, organization or articles of incorporation, okay? It's one of those things where we, we, we want to have consistency. One thing I also want to say here is that when you're done, review and file the form. 
you are able to actually mail the, the form to the IRS. You are able to fax the form to the IRS. In some rare, rare cases, you might be able to actually uh, file the form electronically. So if you have a business tax software, you can file the form electronically, not a problem. By the way, boss, I want to quickly remind you of today's topic. We are having a conversation about Form 2553. So when we talk about the form 2553 what what is the deadline here well it's really the it really depends first of all i want to say that you can file the form any time of the year from january all the way to december there's no sort of uh there's no sort of window where you have to file the form okay and it's one of those things where you have to it, it has to depend upon your decision your your uh, your willingness to actually uh, to elect C, I mean, to elect S corporation as opposed to C corporation. Okay. If you want your company to elect the S corp tax status, you need to either file the form during the year preceding the tax year. The election has to take effect. That's option number one, or file it within two months and 15 days after the beginning of the tax year, the election is to take effect. So two months and 15 days. We're speaking here about 75 days. Let me give you an example. So if you consider the calendar year as a tax year ending on 31st December for your business, the last date to file the form will be 15th March 2024, 2025, 2030, for example. Okay, so let me just break it down even further. You will need to file the form before 15th March 2024 if you want the S Corp election to take effect from January 2024 retroactively. But if you follow after the 2.5 month window, your company will not be elected as an S corporation until 2025. So it's one of those things where you have to be aware of uh, those, uh, those, the dates of those timing windows, if you will. And uh, so the thing is that Form 2553 is uh, typically filed once when a corporation or entity first elects to be treated as an S corporation. However, if the election is, uh, let's say, the election is revoked or terminated and the business wishes to regain S corporation status, the form must be filed again. So it's not, it's not, it's not a form that you have to file, let's say uh, every three years or every five years or, or, or every year for that matter. No, you only file it when you, when you seek S corporation election. Okay. It's a really important. Let's talk about delay here. So when we when we talk about Form 2553, there are cases where uh, the element of delay is really important to pay attention to. So what happens if you file the form late? The uh, the IRS has certain provisions for granting S corporation status in case of a late filing in a few scenarios. Okay, I mean in other words, they will look at your your application. They will they will uh, they will grant you a, a partner, if you will, if you're able to show certain things uh, to to clarify certain things. For the agency so you may be eligible to file form 2553 late if uh, for example the company intended to be elected as an s corporation by the intended effective date that is the date entered on line e of form 2553 or let's say the company has a reasonable cause to not timely file the form so anytime we speak about a reasonable cause we are speaking automatically about the substantiation you can't just uh, in, you you can't invoke a reasonable cause without backing stuff up. You have to really substantiate stuff. And there is a third scenario whereby the IRS will actually grant grant your uh, S corporation election if you file late. Is and that's if the company and its shareholders reported their incomes for S corporation status and in a way consistent with the company's intention to be elected as an S corporation for the same tax year, providing proof of the same. So you have to actually back stuff up, back, back stuff up. And uh, so now there are costs associated with uh, filing form 2553. Okay. The form itself incurs no fees unless you are requesting a special tax year by checking box Q1 which incurs a 6,200 user fee, okay, 6,200. So remember, 
While the IRS does not charge for the form, there could be other associated costs for professional services. For instance, if you hire a CPA or if you hire an enrolled agent or let's say a tax attorney, that, that professional might charge you some fees to actually file the taxes for you. So it's one of those things where the IRS is not charging you, but the, serv the service provider is. So just keep that in mind. Now, I want to really talk to you about a few other things you need to be aware of. And the thing is that when we talk about the processing time for Form 2053, the IRS is not really, uh, it doesn't, the IRS hasn't published any uh, clear indications around that topic. But it's one of those things where I want to say that the IRS has, has been shown to uh, be quick to respond, to actually respond within, uh, within three months, within uh, one to three months. And they will give you a status update on your application. And so you can expect to hear back from them within one to 90 days. Okay. And I'll follow in the form, of course. If not, you can reach out to them for an update. Okay. And uh, if you want to get a form 2553, just go to the IRS website, tap form 2553, and you get the latest, uh, the latest, the la latest version here. Okay. Nothing complicated. Or you can just call 1-800. 829-4933 to actually have uh, to talk to someone and just call within uh, their working hours, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, in your state's time zone to have a clear idea. And uh, so it's it's one of those things where you are able to have a clear to to get your your uh, classification done quickly. Now, when we talk about Form 2553, and there are cases where some people confuse 2553 and 8832. So Form 8832 is used by entities to elect their classification for federal tax purposes, partnership, disregarded entity, or corporation, while Form 2553 is specifically used by corporations that want to elect as corporation status. So when you think about 2553, you are thinking about as corporation status. When you, do, when you, when you think about the 8832, you have a much larger much larger canvas, if you will. And uh, it's one of those things where 2553 is more restrictive in a way. And one thing I want to say here is that when we talk about uh, the, uh, when we talk about S-Corporation election, all shareholders must consent to the S-Corporation election by signing Form 2553. Conversely, to revoke the S-Corporation election, consent from holders of more than 50% of the corporation's share Shares is required. So for uh, for the revoca for the revocation here, you don't need 100. percent But for the uh, for for the initial election, you need to have 100 percent of consent. This is very important to re to remember. So when you are thinking about revoking the status, only uh, those who are holding a majority of the shares can uh, can actually uh, can vouch for their re revocation. But for the initial consent, yes, we got to have. We got to have consensus across the board. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. Let me do a quick recap here. So in today's conversation, I spoke to you about Form 2553. So I gave you the overview, the approach, and now the recap. Thank you so much. God bless you. I'll see you next time. Until then, remember, stay marvelous.